everyone, Gorm here. Welcome back to the channel. Um, as I did not promise, but as a gift, I'm bringing back the Lord of the Rings lore series, or Middle-earth lore series as a whole. So today's episode is going to be Baron and Luthien Part 2. Parts 3 and 4 should be coming out soon. I'd say maybe like 5 days apart. So thank you guys for sticking with me. It's good to be back, and I hope you enjoyed this part right now. So without further ado, let's get into Part 2. The year 465 of the First Age. After Sauron had been vanquished from Tol Sirion, Baron and Luthien rested among the forests of that region. Huon, the Hound of the Valar, returned to Kelegorn, the son of Feanor. Undoubtedly, there was always tension between them since Huon's departure. In the fortress city of Nargothrond, the realm of Finrod Felagund, there was much debate. The prisoners from the Isle of Sauron had reported the death of the king as Kelegorn tried to cease the tension among the kingdom. As the people mourned their king, the perception of the firstborn was at work against Kelegorm and his brother. Orodreth of the House of Finarfin was then crowned king. Orodreth feared the doom of Mandos and all of its works. He forbade the people to spill the blood of Feanor within his house. Orodreth swore that there was to be Little love between Nargothrond and the sons of Feanor thereafter. Let it be so, said Kelegorm. And there was a light of menace in his eyes, but Curufin smiled. They both rode eastward, hoping to join Mithros or some other of their kindred in East Beleriand. The affliction of Feanor followed them as they went. Curiously, Celebrimbor remained in the city. Celebrimbor was the son of Curufin and the grandson of Feanor, who would be most renowned in the Second Age at the founding of Eregion. Celebrimbor boldly condemned the actions of his father and was honored in Nargothrond as he had been before. Huan, bound by loyalty, followed the brothers into the east. Celegorm, Curufin, and Huan rode along the northern marches of Doriath. They sought to reach Himring, the fortress of Mithros, the firstborn of Feanor and their older brother. The sons of Feanor were forbidden passage through Doriath by King Thingol for the kinslayings, and the Queen Melian fenced the realm against them. It was then that they sought the Pass of Dimbar in an effort to get there swiftly and to avoid the Kingdom of the Grey Elves. Baron and Luthien came to the Forest of Brethil, the land that was gifted to the Woodmen just outside the boundaries of Doriath. Baron thought of his oath and committed once again to it. Luthien did not wish to leave him. She said to him, You must choose, Baron, between these two, to relinquish the quest and your oath and to seek a life wandering upon the face of the earth, or to hold to your word and challenge the power of darkness upon its throne. But on either road I shall go with you, and our doom shall be alike. Kelegorm and Curufin had espied Baron and Luthien from afar, recognizing them almost immediately. Kelegorm spurred his horse towards Baron, seeking to run him down. Kurufin then lifted Luthien to his saddle, seeking to make off. Baron sprang from Kelegorm onto the horse of Kurufin from the ground. This leap was so significant as to be named the Leap of Baron, renowned among elves and men for all time thereafter. Baron grasped Kurufin's neck and hurled him down off of the horse along with himself. Luthien was flung off the horse into the grass. Kelegorm prepared to ride upon Baron with his spear. It was then that as fate decided and demanded of him, Huan sprang upon his master and betrayed him once more. Kelegorm would not approach Baron because of the strength of spirit within the Hound of the Valar. Kelegorm had cursed Huan and his horse, yet the resolve of the Hound was unbroken. Luthien commanded Baron not to slay Kurufin. Baron instead decided to rob him of all of his gear and took his knife, Angrist. This knife was made by the dwarf smith Telkar of Nogrod in the Blue Mountains. Baron demanded his horse also. Your horse, he said, I keep for the service of Luthien, and it may be accounted happy to be free of such a master. Curufin's last words to Baron were, Go hence, he said, unto a swift and bitter death. Baron did not take any of his words to heart. Curufin then took Kelegorm's bow in anger and shot back as they fled. The arrow was aimed at Luthien. Huan intercepted the arrow and caught it in his mouth. Unsatisfied, Kurufin shot again. This time, the arrow was taken by Baron.
Huan immediately charged into the forest after they had left and found a healing herb for Baron. With the herb and the power that was within Luthien herself, Baron was healed enough to return to Doriath. Baron, before morning on the journey to Menegroth, reaffirmed his oath once more. He gave Luthien to the care of Huan as she slept, and took the road north to Thangorodrin, in the realm of Morgoth. Baron came to the Pass of Sirion, he crossed the dusts of the Anthauglith, and once he saw the peaks of the Thangorodrin, he left his horse and continued on foot. He turned back for a moment and made a song of parting, seemingly to no one, and then he continued on his journey into the north. Hey everyone, thank you very, very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed, please don't forget to leave a like down below as it helps small channels like mine uh, to get more traction. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more Lord of the Rings content. I'm glad to be back with the lore series, so I will continue to do that. And be ready for parts 3 and 4 coming soon. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.